Hi and welcome to MyOwnHomeServer.com um, This project originally started out as MyOwnServer.info if you remember and I lost that domain. The whole goal of it was to create a, a home web server that uh, out of an old computer, you know a lot of us have an old computer, we've upgraded computers over the years or whatever and we have an old one just sitting in the corner because we just didn't throw it away for whatever reason. And whenever I got to thinking about it, that's a perfect computer for a web server, or it's more than capable uh, for one. But um, And that's what the whole My Own Server uh, project came from, where it came from. It was just a, a desire to turn that into it, and then I, I took notes by using videos and, and a website, so I could reference back to it and find it later. Well, what I never expected was that my notes would end up helping so many people, and I got so much great feedback from people, and uh, and I, and I continued to make tutorials for a while, and uh, and then I kind of uh, you know I just couldn't I didn't find it practical to carry on. Well, anyways, one of the biggest problems with the the web server out of an old computer is that they're not very energy efficient. And the problem with that, you know, is that you've got you've got energy efficiency issues, and then the maintenance problem because you've got a hard drive in there spinning 24/7, and and then of course you've got internet reliability and all that. Um, but eventually, all that's going to have to be replaced. You know, you're going to have computer failure and stuff like that, and especially with mechanical parts. And uh, and then whenever I got to doing the calculations for energy for the electricity it used to run that thing which, you know, a com regular computer run pulls quite a bit of electricity, it was so much cheaper for just a web server to have a paid hosting, like shared hosting, uh, through companies like GoDaddy or something like that. And so it really didn't. And now I I progressed beyond that, and, and then I discovered being able to hack a pogo plug and making that into a web server. That kind of worked, but it didn't work great, because, again, it was a hackish solution. And then I kind of marginalized that. It just it wasn't a very good computer for that. Um, but since that time, these devices called the Raspberry Pi have came out. I didn't know what the heck they were at first, and I bought one, played with it, ended up loving it. And I had the Raspberry Pi 2. That was my first one. And I connected it via the local area network, via Ethernet cable, and used that for all sorts of things. I mean, it still is my personal server and I and I use it for a, a wide range of things I have a personal cloud I have web server I have a music server I have all sorts of stuff it even it still have I have a bunch of hard drives connected to it so what I wanted to do and the, the Raspberry Pi 3 came out and I bought one and I think this is the best platform yet for a personal web server the reason being is because they're very energy efficient they don't use a lot of power and they're very inexpensive. I mean, so the, you you really, for a very minimal cost, you can get up, you can have a, a really decent server. Not just a web server, but a, a, a personal cloud storage that you can sync with your electronic devices and stuff, which is important because I like to keep my photos and stuff backed up and not have them all just on my device to where if it gets stolen, lost, broken, damaged, whatever happens. Um, I don't lose all of my important photos. And so what I'm going to do, I'm starting a new series of tutorials, and they're all going to be based on the Raspberry Pi. Most specifically, it's going to be the Raspberry Pi 3. Now, the reason for the 3 um, is because it has a wireless local area network adapter built into it. And so you don't have to use a little Wi-Fi dongle or anything like that connected. It's already built into the board. And so that allows you to store this thing pretty much anywhere within range of your Wi-Fi router and uh, you know the Raspberry Pi 2 you can use it too for uh, if you'd rather use it and I, I highly recommend using the, the Ethernet connection on that um, even with a 3 but the 3 also has a little more processing power now if you want to do things such as converting videos or uh, transcoding uh, audio files and stuff and we'll get into that when we look at setting up an audio stream a streaming audio server um, you're probably going to want the little beefier processor that you're going to get with a Raspberry Pi 3. And the price difference is very marginal, you know, very little difference, so it's it's worth it. Now, they do use a little more power, the Raspberry Pi 3 does, so that's one of the trade-offs. 
So anyways, this is the introduction to this series of tutorials and so we're going to get started with setting up your own awesome Raspberry Pi server. So to get started, we're going to download the operating system for our Raspberry Pi. And there's several to choose from, but we're wanting a minimalist operating system. And for that, we're going to go with the Raspbian um, operating system. You can consider the other ones, but just to keep everything simple. Now, I am, I'm going for a headless configuration, so you don't... Uh, we're not worried about having a monitor attached or a GUI anyways. I mean, you can still have a monitor attached and do the command line and everything without having to SSH into it. But we're not worried about GUI. It's just a lot of extra file space that we're not going to utilize. Okay, you'll notice that there are two versions of Raspbian. We have, uh, at this time, the current version of Raspbian or Dubine there is um, Jesse. But there's two versions. We have a regular version or the full version, um, and we have a Raspbian Jesse Lite. The Lite version is the one that we want. The uh, full version is going to have the desktop, uh, the GUI, and all that that I said that we're going to skip. It's also going to be quite a bit larger of an image file, so it'll take longer to download. You'll also notice under each download that um, now, oh, for the sake of this tutorial, there you can actually use either one. Um, if you do want the GUI, I'm not going to fault you for that. Um, you can go ahead and download that image and use it, but I'm not going to be using that. I'll be using the light. And so um, you also notice under each one, there's two different options for download. You can download the torrent or you can download a zip file. Um, especially if you're going with the, the full version, I, I would highly recommend using the torrent. The reason being is you're going to get a much faster download rate. The zip downloads on these, uh, from my experience, are terribly slow. So you, But you will need a torrent client in order to download the torrent. If you don't know about torrent clients, check in the description below. Okay, once you finish downloading that file, you'll, you will have downloaded a zip file. And once you unzip it, you'll notice that there is a file with a dot .image. As the uh, or dot img as the extension and that is an image file that's your whole operating system and you need to burn that to your micro SD card as far as what size SD card to use I recommend at least a 32 gig um, they're very inexpensive I mean 16 a little bit uh, I mean you can always use like thumb drives to expand your um, your capability or your capacity but I would use 32. I've, I've used 32 consistently. Um, from what I understand, you can easily use a 64 gig with the uh, Raspberry Pi 3, but you don't want to go for, I think, 128 gig. It might not work. I don't know. You'll you do some research on that. Just look into it. Uh, you might leave a comment below and, and kind of ex tell me your experience with 128 gig if you've tried something larger. But I, I feel pretty good with a 32 gig, but it because like I said, I usually attach external storage devices like a thumb drive or something, and you can use pretty much whatever size one of those you want. So, anyway, so the SD card you're going to want to get the software to burn the image uh, file to your SD card. Now I'm using Windows to do this, and so you'll need to click on the link to that, and it'll take you to the software to do that. The software to burn the image file for Windows is called a Win32 Disk Imager. And you can download that from SourceForge for free. And so go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now go ahead and install this. Make sure you read the uh, all of that writing because you shouldn't agree to things without reading it. But whatever. Um, and just go ahead and install it. I mean, it's real straightforward. Choose your location if you want to add a desktop icon you can make it easier to find it and it only takes uh, just takes a moment there to install it and so we want to go ahead and launch it and now you're going to locate the uh, the image file so wherever you downloaded and extracted that image file from the zip um, you're going to want to load that and then you're going to want to select your device and your device, of course, will be, make sure that it is your micro SD card, the one that you want to use for this, because it will erase everything on it. So if you've got uh, photos, videos, or something like that on it, you're not, you, you don't want to erase it. Um, so just make sure that you're, you're selecting the right device. And once you do that, you're going to go ahead and click right. And, of course, it's going to warn you about not wanting to overwrite it. 
and it can corrupt the device so whatever now this usually doesn't take very long especially if you choose the light version the the heavier version the full version may take just a little bit longer but just go ahead and let it finish doing this and all right now that we're done and we got a write successful we're ready to go ahead and remove the drive or remove the S micro SD card and put it into our Raspberry Pi and we're ready to boot our Raspberry Pi for the first time now once you've installed your SD card in your Raspberry Pi go ahead and connect your Raspberry Pi to an appropriate power source the Raspberry Pi 3 you're gonna to want to make sure you have a proper AC adapter there your regular little phone charger is not sufficient to power this but it'll run through may take a, a few seconds there or a little bit longer your first time booting for it to to run through everything and then I think it restarts and then you're gonna eventually get to a login the login the default login is pi pi is your username the password is raspberry so you want to make sure you spell that right if you're not sure how to spell it look it up raspberry and that should log you in you you should get to the command prompt now I recommend highly recommend you changing that password at the very least change the password rather quickly if you remember earlier in 2016 there was a major DDoS attack that uh, against the DNS servers and it crippled the internet uh, for several hours and how that was ma mainly launched was by using a bunch of these little devices like Raspberry Pis where people just had them connected to the internet had the default password set the username and password like Pi and then Raspberry and they basically took over all of the uh, the little micro computers and launched a major attack and people didn't even realize what had happened um, again change the password it's simple to do I've got instructions in the the comment section or in the descri video description so just go ahead and do that real quick and just make your life a lot easier don't contribute to the problem and that concludes our we've got our internet we've got our operating system installed now so that concludes this to part of the tutorial and so now we move on to installing all the cool stuff there for whatever makes it our big awesome server on a little raspberry pi thanks for watching and make sure you like subscribe and see you again next time